So the next schedule on our list here is the working capital schedule. The reason that this schedule can be so intimidating is honestly because it's just often misunderstood. You know, what does it mean working capital and how do I forecast the current assets and the current liabilities? It can be a little overwhelming if this is your first time doing this. The good news is you actually already have all the information you need to build out your forecast. You're just pulling information from the income statement and pulling information from the balance sheet. What we're going to be doing is building out a couple metrics called the working capital statistics down here, and we'll be using these to build our forecast. And so there's three primary stats. The DSOs, or the day's sales outstanding, relates to the accounts receivable. I like to think of this as just how long does it take for us to collect payment from our customers. Days on hand relates to the inventory. The way I think about this one is if we didn't buy any other inventory, how many, how many days would we have until we just ran out? And then the last one is the day's pay payables outstanding relates to the accounts payable. This is how long on average does it take us to pay our bills to some other company. So our DPOs is somebody else's DSOs. So they're interconnected in that sort of way. So to forecast them, well, first we have to just calculate what they are historically. I'm going to open up the formula here and you can see I've got the note here. It's just the accounts receivable divided by the sales. You can see here's the AR divided by the sales multiplied by 365. And so this tells us on average takes about 29 days to collect payment from our customers. And so I'm just going to carry that number forward in the future. For the days on hand, it's pretty much the same thing, just slightly moved around a little bit. It's the inventory divided by the cost of goods times 365. And for the DPOs, it's the accounts payable divided by the cost of goods times 365. So now that I've got my historical calculations, I'm just going to pull these forward and that's going to be my forecast. You know, the history is pretty consistent. There's no reason to think that in the future it would be materially different. And so with that in mind, now I can just start building out my schedule. If I go to the top here, well, my sales and my COGS, thankfully we already did that in the income statement. So I can just bring these over. I'm going to press control R and I'm bringing this stuff from my income statement up at the top. And now to forecast my accounts receivable, all I have to do is reverse engineer the DSO calculation a little bit to back into a number. And so how to do that is to take the DSO number from below. So equals, right, our new number here, divided by 365, and then multiply it by sales that came from my income statement. Okay, and now I've got a forecast for my accounts receivable. For the inventory, exact same concept. I'm just going to take the days on hand number, which is here, divide that by 365, and multiply that by my cost of goods, not the sales. So do that there. Now suddenly I have an inventory forecast. Accounts payable, which is down here, exact same thing. My days payable assumption divided by 365, multiplied by my cost of goods sold. And now I've got a forecast for all three of my primary working capital accounts. All I had to do was reverse engineer my DSO, DOH, and DPO formulas. Last but not least, these last two, they're minor accounts, they're much simpler. We're just gonna take the percentage that they were on a historical basis, multiply it by the sales, and then same thing for this one. Percentage on a historical basis, multiply it by the sales. And now we're all set. By just looking at information we already had, we were able to calculate the working capital statistics, carry them forward, and then reverse engineer some of our formulas to get actual dollar values for these accounts. And now we can link up each of them to our balance sheet when we're ready to get to that step. And so in the next video, we're going to move on. We're going to go down to the CapEx and depreciation schedule.